Greetings from Tony, WB5ZDD. In my last video, I uh, showed you some stuff about uh, that I was anticipating getting a uh, uh, iGate Mini uh, SAT satellite uh, automatic tracker, and uh, it finally came in. My God, I'm happy. <laughs> and uh, so I was going to do a follow-up video, uh, as I promised, to try to show you guys my, uh, my trail, my trip down uh, getting set up for satellite radio. I have the ICOM uh, 9700, which was the first step. And then my second step was uh, getting the, uh, uh, the SAT uh, from iGateMini.com. So uh, let's, uh, let's bring, uh, bring up the screens here, and I'll explain what we're looking at. So in the lower left-hand corner, we're seeing the screen from the ICOM 9700. And you can see that it's, uh, the VFOs are flashing back and forth because uh, the uh, frequency is being changed automatically by the uh, SAT. And in the, uh, the left lower screen, you see the, or window I should say, the, uh, the screen from the SAT. And uh, it is currently uh, tracking, uh, what is that? AO92 uh, satellite, which is an FM satellite. Uh, so the uplink and downlink are only FM, where a linear satellite would uh, actually be using a uh, single sideband, upper and lower sideband. So this one is probably a good one to start with. If uh, FM satellites are generally easier to operate, I've actually done it before many years ago uh, from my uh, dual band, uh, full duplex uh, ICOM radio that I used to have in my Jeep. And I was able to work uh, a few FM satellites uh, many, many years ago just uh, using the 50 watts and the uh, quarter wave antenna, dual band antenna that I had on the Jeep at the time. So this is going to be quite an upgrade going this direction. And uh, we're, uh, you can see that the, uh, there's an acquisition of signal, which is uh, uh, when we should be able to first hear the satellite, the uh, AO92 uh, satellite, uh, at 11 o'clock. It's currently 10.58 a.m., so we're about two minutes from the pass. And uh, let's just uh, take a quick look at the, uh, just the uh, web interface uh, from the uh, uh, SAT, and it shows us uh, the satellite track. Uh, I'm located in southeast Texas, so you can see that the uh, the footprint, that red circle around the um, uh, square, uh, the yellow square, that's the satellite we're tracking, uh, that that footprint is getting ready to hit my location. And you can see the, the future path from the uh, aqua or blue uh, line, track line. Now, if you move over uh, from that uh, upper left uh, quadrant to the middle, you see that the pass is going to be uh, almost straight overhead. So this is really a good pass based on what information I've collected so far. This is probably one of the best passes that you can get. Now, I think that would only be true if, you, if you're if you using directional antennas, if you're able to uh, uh, adjust the elevation of the antenna. Because uh, if it's going straight overhead, you're going to need to be pointing those antennas straight up as it passes overhead. Uh, a, a pass, a lower pass might be better if you're using uh, a more uh, or less directional uh, antenna, especially one that has good side uh, to side coverage and not so much uh, uh, vertical coverage. And uh, I've got the, uh, the SAT set up for uh, simulated uh, antennas. So basically it's going to try to adjust the antenna automatically, which, which is what this thing is supposed to do. It not only tracks the frequency on the radio, it also adjusts your antenna, and I'm going to be getting a Yaesu GT, I'm sorry, G5500, 5500, and it is both azimuth and elevation. So the little, uh, in the uppermost middle window, you see that little pink square uh, that's moving towards the white uh, triangle, or I guess it's a square, but just turned differently. Uh, so that is the simulated antenna moving to uh, capture the satellite. And uh, we actually have acquisition of signal, uh, and we're going to be losing the signal. If you look at the SAT display, um, well, if you could see it, uh, if you look at the SAT display uh, where it says uh, LOS at 11.11.25, it gives me the distance, the azimuth, the elevation, which is the top line, and uh, the SAT, of course, the AO92. So uh, if I had antennas set up, we would actually be able to uh, theoretically be hearing the satellite now. 
And the, the cool thing is, uh, is that the, uh, the software on uh, uh, the SAT actually would allow me to go uh, to a beacon if there is one on the satellite that I'm uh, tracking. And I could wait to hear the beacon and then easily, just by clicking, uh, uh, clicking on, on, on this line right here, I could switch from a beacon to the operating frequency and I would have a, a better chance of uh, capturing the satellite and being able to find somebody to talk to. Now, that's going to be a whole, a whole other video about actually talking through the satellite. This is just to give you an idea of what the SAT does and the reason why I, I purchased it. So right now, uh, the pass is going on. The antenna is trying, the simulated antenna is trying to uh, keep up with uh, where the satellite is positioned in the sky. So it would be continuously moving around uh, to uh, track that satellite, giving me the best possible uh, chance of uh, getting into the satellite and being able to work it. And you can see on the uh, upper uh, most uh, display on the uh, web interface, uh, where the position of the satellite is in the uh, in this case in this overhead pass. So uh, as it gets uh, as it gets closer to the overhead pass, I think generally it gets closer to to the, the you know to me my station. Uh, I guess it really just depends on the the type of orbit that it's in. Uh, I think this one is kind of in a constant orbit when, as it passes over uh, low uh, since it's a low uh, Earth orbit uh, satellite, but some are uh, parabolic in nature. So they could, uh, depending on how the, the orbit is set, it, they actually could go uh, further away as they were orbiting. But I think in this case, it's, uh, it's, it's going to get physically closer. And of course, the closer it is, the uh, more likely the signal uh, will be greater for both uh, receiving at the, at the satellite and transmitting from the satellite. So if you've operated uh, on a repeater, an FM repeater on two meters or 70 centimeters, this is uh, uh, going to be very much the same thing with a few uh, twists and turns. Uh, uh, pardon the, the pun with the circular polarization, if, uh, if you get that. Uh, <laughs> because the, uh, the, it's, like, it's like the repeater that you'd be operating on is moving constantly and is only available for a, a relatively short period of time, which I think is kind of uh, what, what makes it fun. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it, you, he only have a limited time. Uh, it, it, you, the repeater's not sitting there for you just to, to come use. You have to make sure that you've scheduled time uh, to be alert and get set up and ready to go. And then, uh, if you have the right antennas and the right, uh, uh a clear path from horizon to horizon, you, uh, may be able to dock uh, on the, uh, the satellite through the satellite for the entire pass. And, uh, so, you know, if you if you look at this one, uh, the we have a uh, we'll only have a, f a few minutes to to make this uh, this this conversation to make conversations on it. So uh, it's currently eleven oh four. So this pass is going to end in about six minutes. So you got six minutes to have uh, conversations. And I will say this: I have learned uh, from watching videos and reading that the FM passes uh, the FM satellites are a little more difficult uh, because you. You, you only really have the one frequency to talk through like a repeater. So there, you, may be in conf, uh, you may be conflicting with several other amateur radio operators trying to use that same frequency during that short period of time. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I think a lot of people get into the, the linear satellites because uh, it actually takes a, a frequency range and uh, rebroadcast a, a wide range. So you can have several conversations going on in a linear satellite Whereas uh, an FM satellite, uh, you're pretty much stuck to the, uh, the one channel. And again, I'll just point out the simulated antenna uh, in the uh, upper right-hand corner, that little uh, pink box, that's where the antenna is pointing. And the little white box is the satellite. So you'll see that the, uh, the satellite uh, antennas are currently being uh, adjusted to uh, track the satellite. So... Anyway, that's kind of how this thing works. Uh, I, uh, if you want more information about the SAT, just go to uh, uh, iGateMini.com. That's iGateMini.com and check it out. I've been very pleasantly surprised with the unit. It was uh, quite easy to set up. It's a self-contained unit. Uh, I'm, the only thing I'm doing uh, with a computer is uh, uh, accessing uh, the SAT's website. So there's a, there's a, a little web uh server on the SAT and I'm connecting to it through an IP address. So you literally could take this thing 
uh, out in the field and uh, hook up uh, antenna, a, a Yaesu uh, G5500. Uh, I think some other uh, rotors are available uh, that support some other rotors besides that one. But you could take uh, take it out in the field, hook it up to the rotor, uh, hook it up to your uh, 9700, and uh, take a laptop, and then you could just use the laptop to select your uh, satellite and uh, so on and so forth. Oh, I, I do need to show you one thing here real quick. I think uh, this was really handy whenever I found this out. You can uh, click this future button, uh, and uh, it will call up a list of satellites. So the AO92 is currently in green, which means that's the one, the pass that's happening right now. And uh, it's, it's the one that, uh, uh, that we have selected. But if I wanted to get ready for the next pass, like I'm, I've made all the contacts I want on, uh, on this satellite, or I didn't make any and I'm just giving up and I'm hoping that the, uh, the next satellite will be better, I can go over here to RS44 and it will uh, quickly adjust everything so that it will be uh, uh, ready, or let's see, is, are we already in acquisition? Yeah, yeah, so uh, RS-44 is, uh, is currently in a pass as well. And of course, this can happen. Uh, this really depends on the satellite positions. They, uh, you, may, you may have to choose satellites <laughs> to talk on, which is, which is a great thing. And uh, it's, uh, it's not a bad pass either. It's, uh, it's not quite directly overhead like the, uh, the other satellite was. But uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it certainly doesn't look like a bad pass. And uh, this is a uh, linear satellite. Uh, and uh, so I can actually click on uh, the transponder frequency. And now it has adjusted the IC9700 uh, for uh, those for its transponder frequency. And the transponder, like, uh, like I was saying, it takes a, a frequency range, a, a section of the band uh, input, and then outputs that same uh, range, but on a different frequency, uh, so that you can have many conversations, uh, six, eight, 10, I don't know, uh, conversations going on. So you have a better chance of, uh, of, of getting in, uh, and talking to someone and you can talk longer. So, uh, I probably will be working quite, qu quite quickly to the linear satellites cause I like to talk, <laughs> Not much of a contester, and uh, that's kind of what the FM satellites are, is like you're, you're working a contest. Anyway, I uh, hope this has uh, been good information for you, and uh, I'll uh, keep watching for some uh, future videos to uh, follow me on my uh, trek of getting up a uh, satellite uh, fixed station. And uh, you know, I'll have some audio on the conversations as well, so you get a feel for that at, at, as we go, uh, hopefully. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be able to accomplish it. So seven threes for now, and uh, go check out the iGate uh, Mini uh, dot com website and the SAT.